Hey ho and hi ho my little Liebchens. Okay, so we have already done a how-to video on um, Posh books the little itty bitty notebook covers for the mini composition books 3.25 by 4.5 inches is the measurements on this little itty bitty composition book. We're gonna do another one today this time <laughs> We're hoping that uh the video goes smoother. <laughs> All right, so what you will need, you will need one piece of marine vinyl six by eight. You will need a second piece of marine vinyl six by eight for the inside. You will need two pieces of marine vinyl that are two and a half by six inches for the little slip pockets. You will need three little pieces of FOE I use, um, I think it's half inch or five eighths inch FOE, and you need to cut them to two and one half inches, two and one half inches. And you'll need a little piece of ribbon. I'm using quarter inch ribbon today. Um, you can use five eighths, you can use whatever, but you need to cut it about eight inches long, okay? And obviously the other thing you're gonna need is the pattern, her. You're gonna hoop some medium weight cutaway, which is my very favorite stabilizer. And then you are going to run color stop one. Remember, color stops one and two are completely arbitrary colors. They're to give you dye lines and tack downs. The colors on this pattern that matter are three, four, and five. And then we're gonna switch over and attach um, backs and pockets at number six and that's where you'll want to match your bobbin and your top thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and run color stop one and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so here we go. We've got all of our little die lines stitched out, tacked down, ready to go. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to attach our little ribbon. And to do that, you will need a couple of, actually just one right now, just one little piece of tape. We're gonna turn this around and we wanna overlap this die line by about a quarter of an inch. Not a whole bunch. And you don't need a bunch of tape, you just wanna hold that in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coil my ribbon out of place or out of the way. And I'm gonna just tape it down so that, or not tape it down, bar -har, or pin it down so that it doesn't catch on my needle head and yank some stuff out of place, make a big old mess, all that good stuff. Or I said I was going to pin it out of the way. Look at me being a big giant mess. Oi! There we go, all out of the way. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna take our FOE, um, and for each of these, you will need two itty bitty pieces of tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tear my six little itty bitty pieces of tape. So I've got it all set up and ready. All right, I'm gonna take my FOE, I'm gonna fold it in half, fold it in half, and then I'm gonna take the open ends, the cut ends, and I'm gonna place them about one quarter of an inch on the inside of this die line right here. And then I'm gonna take another little piece of tape and I'm gonna tape it down out of the way. And I am going to repeat that two more times. Fold over in half, raw edges together, yay. Find my die line, overlap by about a quarter of an inch. Tape it on the inside. Tape it on the outside. Rotate my hoop, yay. Then I take my little FOE, fold it in half. Line it up, one quarter of an inch, a little piece of tape, and a little piece of tape. There we go. Now we're gonna pop this bad boy back in the machine and we're gonna run color stop two, two, two. Okie dokie, so we have gotten those nailed down, yay us. I am going to take off only the interior tapes, just the inside ones, and I'm not gonna throw them away 
because I'm gonna use them over and over and over again. Now, we're gonna put down the piece of marine vinyl that is gonna be the outside cover. The prettiest piece of vinyl ever. And if you are, you wanna center it over your die lines, make sure everything's equally covered, left, right, top, bottom. And if you are super paranoid, you can throw a little bit of tape on the four corners, just kind of hold it in place. You don't have to, but I know that some of you are like, eek, unsecured vinyl, what do we do? There you go. Now we're gonna pop this back into the machine and we are going to run color stops three, four, and five. That's all of our design work on the outside of the book. And then we'll be back just before the final tack together to show you how you put the back and the slip pockets in. Back in just, well, I won't say a few minutes, but it'll seem like instantaneous for you. Hey, so here we are. We've got all of the pretty pretties all stitched out. Everything's rocking and rolling and ready to go. So what do we do now? Well, the first thing we do is we flip, well, of course, as always, we check for jumps. And because there's lettering, there's gonna be jumps. I always recommend to snip uh, your jump stitches in the hoop so that it gives you a little bit of uh, tension to pull against. There we go. Let's see. Oh look, all this lettering. Look at my life, it's so much fun. Well, I tell you what, you guys do not wanna sit here and watch me tr trim 35 jumps. Um, you want to get on with it, so let's go ahead and do that. So, we're gonna flip our hoop over. These two die lines are for this pocket placement, but we don't put the pockets on until after we've d put the back on. So we're not gonna be see able to see those little lines. So I highly recommend, so you get your little lining up stuff done correctly. You just take a pen and a ruler and you extend those lines out a little bit so you can see what you are doing. All right, now we are gonna take an I chose poorly. I uh, was licking all my pretty uh, mustard yellow, goldish yellow. And I'm like, ooh, I want that to be on the inside. Forgetting that mirror, or this is glitter canvas, I'm sorry, it's a little bit thinner. Glitter canvas does not like to slide on my needle plate. And then I thought, you know what, that's okay. This is my opportunity um, to show people some of my tricks. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it like that. So on this, um, this is the back piece. We're gonna cover all of the die line. Then we're gonna take our little itty bitty black pieces and we're gonna line them up with those die lines right there, okay? And we also want to tape those in place a little bit so they don't go slip sliding away. Like this and like this. And then we're gonna all right, around, and we're gonna line this one up as so. Yes, all right. Then a little piece of tape, a little piece of tape. Tape it in place. Oops, it slid. Tape it in place. Tape it in place. Now, all this mishogana, um is going to catch and on your needle plate, it's gonna wanna drag. So take a piece of really thin WSS, all right, um, and cover, and everybody's got a different favorite way to do this. Some people are like, oh, that waste WSS. Um, just use some tear away, except that I hate pulling those T90 little uh, hairs out from underneath stitching. That bugs me a lot. So just take a little piece of WSS and again, some tape. How much tape? Some tape. And tape the WSS 
all the way over this stuff so that it has a nice surface to glide on. Okay. We want it to glidey, glidey, glide all the way across that stuff. Okay, and that should be way mo enough. We're gonna throw it back in, and this is the last step, the tack together. And then I'll come back and I will show you how to, um, oh, also, hee, you wanna take these guys off the front. So that um, the edges will lay all flat. There you go. All right, run your last stop and we'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, there we are, we're all tacked together. We got all our pieces, we got all our parts, everything's all joined together. Come together. No, you don't need to hear me sing. That's pretty embarrassing and horrible. So I am gonna go through and I'm gonna take off all my tape and you'll see that my WSS, cause I didn't tight, tape it all the way down and all the way around like I should have, got a little bit pulled up, but that's okay. Um, it did not interfere with our bean stitch not one little bit so we are good to go and everything is happy and hunky-dory so i am just going to pull up these tapes and i'm going to be using them again because while i did buy stock in 3m i'm not ready to retire yet so let's be frugal there we go now i am going to pull up my wss i love this stuff it is so easy to work with Woo, there we go, all done. Now, we are going to unhoop, pop, cupping, there you go. Now, there is only one side of this, only one side, that is super easy to trim. The other three sides have got dangly bits. They got pieces and parts hanging off of them and we don't wanna slice our pieces and parts because that's a trip to the ER. All right, so last time, um, somebody was like, well, why don't you just slip a cutting mat underneath there? Well, because the cutting mat is too thick, it'll bulk up. Um, I've had some other people go, well, I'm just gonna hand cut because that whole ruler trick, that seems like a prescription for disaster. And it may well. I mean, I live my life courting disaster daily. But for right now, I haven't sliced through my easy hem and I haven't sliced through my own hand, knock wood. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a thin something that will block the um, cutter from going through, um, through it. So we can just do first the top vinyl, we slide the easy hem or we slide the little piece of blocker between the top layer of vinyl and the FOE. Then we flip over, and now we want to go between the FOE, the FOE, and the stabilizer. And then we put our ruler down, or you can hand cut if you are, you know, magical and fantastic and wonderful at that whole hand cutting thing. That is always an option. But I'm not so wonderful and fantastic at that hand cutting thing. So I needed a way to be able to use my ruler. Okay, now we're gonna come up here and again, we're gonna go between the stabilizer and our um, ribby ribbon. Just like that, okay? And then we're gonna take a ruler and I'm trimming at about one eighth of an inch. That's the that's the distance I think looks good and does not jeopardize the universe by cutting stitches. Well, I just really messed that one up, didn't I? There we go. Whee! Or it could be that it's time for a new blade because I think I put that blade on before I left the rental house and we bought this house back in February. So yeah, it's probably time for a new. Now we're gonna slide it between the top vinyl and the ribby ribbon. Make sure that the ribby ribbon 
is behind. And again, one eighth of an inch. You don't have to do an eighth of an inch. You can do a sixteenth of an inch because you are really good at your job. Or you can do a quarter of an inch because you like a little bit more play. Um, it's entirely up to you. Me, I like I like that one eighth of an inch. And now, two more cuts, guys. Two more cuts. That's it, and we're almost done. No, not really. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff we got to take care of in the studio today. But I can dream, right? There we go. Poof. And now we flip it over, and again, we want to put between the stabilizer and the FOE. Stabilizer and the FOE. And then one eighth of an inch. And I really did not do you guys any favor by doing a black bobbin with black vinyl. Because apparently I like life difficult. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oops. Put some elbow in that girl. There we go. All right. Now, I need to find my very favorite scissors in the entire universe. And we are going to round out them their corners, okay? Because I think roundy quarters, rounded corners, look hot. And I just realized I am probably entirely off screen doing this. Sorry, here you go. All right, so we are just going to round the corner. Round the corner. Round the corner and round the corner okay now woo, look at all that woo. we're gonna take our little uh, mini composition book and we're gonna slide yaba and huba who huba and then we're gonna put our ribbon here like we've got a place to hold then we are going to take a pen and we are going to go abra cadabra ala kazam oops there you guys go there is the starfleet academy command captain's log posh book all right and peace